Mr. Speaker, on the 17th of June 2019, while responding to the 2019-2020 budget in Parliament, I showed uh, two pictures about the pathetic state of the facilities at the CWM Hospital, Mr. Speaker. One was about a washroom door using an intravenous tube as a makeshift lock, failing to provide privacy to patients using the, uh, using the washroom. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I was at CWM Hospital, and I was aghast that despite the Health Minister's assurance that the door was going to be fixed, it remains the same for 26 months, Mr. Speaker. I said that the picture showed the portrait of the nation, a nation at the odds with itself, torn apart by bad governance, lack of transparency, accountability, and good governance. Mr. Speaker, I have with me two pictures of the same door that I took yesterday at CWM Hospital. And uh, I just want to show it so you know. Listen, listen, Minister. Now, let me explain again, because it's not quite clear. This picture that I'm holding, Mr. Speaker, shows the door to the same laboratory. The door, minus the intravenous tube where it was before, and it's, it's actually stopped and blocked by a piece of wood. There's a block that's stopping the door from closing. And when I went there yesterday, there was a guy, there was a man there from the acute surgical ward. After an operation, he was using the same room. And I was just walking and I saw him and he had absolutely no privacy. Now, Mr. Speaker, if there was a care app for Fiji, it's the same on the minister. 26 months I've been raising this issue here, and if there's anyone else who says that our health system is in order, I say no. I say so no. So I just want to say that. And this picture, like the ones that I showed earlier, Mr. Speaker, tells the painful story of the state of decay of the health facilities and indeed a nation presided over by the Honourable Prime Minister for over 13 years, who for all intents and purposes trusts only his Attorney General and Economy Minister or his right-hand man for guiding the nation. And the Honourable Minister of Economy hasn't betrayed his trust, at least to his boss, who firmly believes he can do no wrong. Now come the, nine, come the time to deliver the 2021 national budget, the Honourable Economy Minister has progressed from Cindy Lopez time after time to Fleetwood Mac's Sweet Little Lies. And during the budget night on 17 July, for the upteenth time, the Prime Minister endorsed every little lie that his right-hand man was telling the nation to justify the biggest ever borrowing and worst economic performance in now 50th years of independence. Now that is indeed transparency in Fiji style, Mr. Speaker, our way or the highway. Now I will outline some of those lies as well as those uttered yesterday. Line number one, Mr. Speaker, there was no reference whatsoever to the fact that the economy contracted in 2019 straight after the general elections. Line number two, $60 million allocation for the first 150,000 visitors to Fiji at $400 each incentive when our borders will remain closed for all intents and purposes and there will be no travel or start of any bubble anytime soon. And the sum is under requisition too, Mr. Speaker. Now the question is, is it to aid Fiji Airways 
Why not incentivize local tourism using these funds to generate some activity in our hotels and resorts when it is known when the borders to our biggest markets will be opened? And what happens to the few millions of dollars collected in airport departure taxes of $200 per each ticket pre-sold by Fiji Airways to locals, travel agents, and overseas to raise money because no travel has been undertaken and departure taxes will be reduced by $100? Will those that have bought the pre-sale tickets be refunded $100 uh, for each ticket? It would be daylight robbery if there isn't any refund because there has been no travel, Mr. Speaker. Then there is no mention if Fiji Airways will refund all money for tickets bought by people and corporate clients who are now either unemployed or have closed their businesses and have not been able to travel because of closed borders. However, we are told that Fiji Airways is now backtracking and refusing refund, saying they will only do so in they will do in the case of tickets sold to destinations in America. This is contrary to what the Economy Minister said when tabling a motion to guarantee $455 million to Fiji Airways on the 25th of May 2020 when he said, and I quote, in addition to the fixed costs, ongoing flight suspensions and cancellations are contributing towards increased customer refunds even if tickets have been resold as non-refundable. Fiji Airways is obliged to refund customers as the service is not being delivered at all, I unquote. But these are remedial measures that we, that we needed to hear from the Minister. Why, Mr. Speaker, is government in Fiji Airways conspiring to keep the funds to help boost their ailing finances? Line number three, Mr. Speaker. There is no explanation for the allocation of $100 million, $100 million unemployment benefit fund in Head 50, apart from the Minister's announcement of Phase 3, to top up those withdrawing their own funds during Phase 3 of withdrawals? What about those in the informal sector who are not FNPF members? Line number four. Increase to Fiji police budget when 40 million has been allocated to the so-called shovel-ready projects of new police stations in Nandi, Nakasi, Lotoka, and Nalawa that were already under construction and this allocation, too, is under requisition. So no hope of generating any additional employment there, Mr. Speaker. Line number five, Mr. Speaker. Continuing construction of the Prime Minister's office worth $7 million, where no construction has been done whatsoever, despite allocations in previous budgets. Before this allocation, a total of $13.35 million was allocated, also under requisition, in the last three budgets. With this additional allocation, it will take it to the sum of $20.35 million. Mr. Speaker, another act of transparency, Fiji first style, when the honorary workers of Fiji are impoverished and hungry. But the Prime Minister's office is more important than the lives of our struggling citizens. Line number six, Mr. Speaker. Reduction of guaranteed prices of a ton of sugar to $70 from $85, with the Permanent Secretary of Sugar in the Prime Minister's office complicating things and confusing growers by saying, this, by saying these things contrary to what is clearly written in the budget documents. Now, the Prime Minister has followed suit saying that $70 will guarantee the first three payments with government paying the full price of $85 in the last payment due in October for the current season. What about the fourth payment, Mr. Speaker, that is due in May 2021? Yet another example of bungling and wandering like one's drunks on the part of this government that has been rightfully described as rudderless. Line number seven, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Honorable Prime Minister attacked the Fiji Times and the NSP leader, Honorable Professor Biman Prasad, for highlighting the $100 million a month needed to service debt commitments of $1.179 billion in 2021 20, financial year as contained in the budget estimates. He said both the Fiji Times and the Honorable Landers P. Leader forget, the most, forget that most debt was accumulated before 2007, 
which means until December 2006 when the Mwanyamarama regime came into power. Nothing can be further from the truth, Mr. Speaker. Until the end of 2006, government debt, according to official government figures, was 2.863 billion. The budget supplementary document to this budget shows that at the end of July 2020, which is only three days away, debt will be 6.705 billion, almost 4 billion more accumulated in over 13 years in contrast to 2.863 billion in 36 years for the previous government. According to the budget documents, debt level is projected to be 8.256 billion, which is also 5.393 billion accumulated in 14 years than the 2.863 billion accumulated in 36 years from 1970 to 2006, Mr. Speaker. And the budget documents forecast national debt to be 9.15 billion, which the Fiji First government will bequest to the people of Fiji when they are crushed at the poll sometime between May 22 and January 2023. A debt of 6.292 billion accumulated in 16 years in contrast to 2.863 billion accumulated in 36 years. And I would like to ask the Prime Minister to get real, Mr. Prime Minister, do your sums right and stop relying on, fact, on factually incorrect speeches concocted by your spin doctors. Mr. Speaker, how have we come to the sweet little lies year in, year out, culminating in the point of no return that we are facing? The answer lies in practice of deception and connivance in manipulating past budgets. A lot of opposition colleagues have said that these budget figures are cooked. The NFP leader stated that the government has been manipulating budget figures all along, and I totally agree with him. I know, Mr. Speaker, that, that the road in terms of manipulating GDP started in 2013, so that the Mwanyamarama government could enter the 2014 general elections in a strong position. Mr. Speaker, I have in my possession an email given to me by the Prime Minister that was sent to him by the Attorney General on the 15th December 2013. The Prime Minister, who was also Finance Minister from mid-August 2008 to September 2014, asked me to arrange a meeting with the Attorney General as per the email, and duly wrote his instructions on that email. As you all know, I was the Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's office at the time. Now, I will not read the whole email, Mr. Speaker. I will not read the entire email that contained the Honorable Attorney General's concerns about the need to increase the GDP base after the figures released by the Fiji Bureau of Statistics estimated the, 2012, the 2012 growth to 1.7 percent, when according to AG a growth of 2.2 percent was announced in the budget. I will read the concluding paragraphs that clearly prove that the Attorney General's obsession with electioneering and not, and not reality. And I quote, Listen, Minister, listen, listen. It is very disconcerting, it is very disconcerting that the PS Permanent Secretary of Finance and PS Planning recommended the release of these figures. They should have known that this will directly contradict the announcements made by the Bainamarama government and in particular by you in your annual budget address. And the Attorney General continued. As elections will be, less, will be held in less than nine months, politicians will highlight that. One, the economy is not doing well based on all numbers released by the Fiji Bureau of Statistics. terms as well as ratio of GDP. And three, the credibility of government's policies and the results would be attacked as the data for growth and debt show that things are worse off. It is therefore important that Fiji Bureau of Statistics recalls the GDP released under 2008 base as it contains major flaws or errors which will negatively impact this government as we move towards election. Now let me repeat, 
when the Attorney General wanted the GDP to be increased. It is therefore important that FBOS recalls the GDP released under the 2008 base as it contains major flaws or errors which will negatively impact the government as we move forward to elections. And he concluded, it is also recommended that we have a meeting with Arif Ali from Armia, the Reserve Bank of Hiji, to give you a full appraisal. Mr. Speaker, at the time, Mr. Arif Ali was the Chief Manager Economics Group at RBF, who in 2014 was appointed Deputy Governor and in 2017 appointed the Governor of the Reserve Bank of Fiji. Mr. Speaker, nothing is more clearer than the indisputable evidence that I have just outlined in Parliament today of how the Honourable Attorney General influenced the Honourable Prime Minister in agreeing to ban the really the reality and truth for political supremacy. That is what I call weak, indecisive leadership that readily condescends to his Attorney General. Instead of castigating his Attorney General, the Prime Minister readily accepted his ploy to concoct economic data with the help of the then senior RBF officials so that both who under the Fiji First Constitution are the only two persons eligible to become party leader could this ingeniously wing their way into power in September 2014. Mr. Speaker, I am glad that I quit the government after only nine months because my conscience could not allow me to serve two masters who were scratching each other's backs while the nation and its people were being led up the garden path. For me, sacrificing my $200,000 salary and pension was necessary to avoid becoming a yes man. Like all others currently in the 51st party, singing praises to the two men rule, which is responsible, listen, Minister, which is responsible for the destruction of this nation's social, economic, and political fabric Order. through politics of connivance, Order. deviousness, and deception. Now, all of them know it, Mr. Speaker but they have no guts. And we counted for the fear of losing their seats and their hefty pay perks and privileges. And all of them are happy and are content in going against their conscience to be subservient to the members of the animal farm. Deceptive indeed, Mr. Speaker. What government can quite scandalously legalize COVID-19 as an act of God? Why? because government wants employers, including itself, as the largest employer to escape its obligation of paying fair redundancy and remuneration to its workers. Now, one need to go any further, one no need, to go, need not go any further than hundreds of Fiji Airways and Air Terminal Services workers arbitrarily terminated without comp compensation despite the workers agreeing to be on leave without pay. This is from a government that brags about leaving nobody behind. Now it's leaving everybody breathing dust, raised by its fast and furious galloping towards political annihilation. Their bogus budgeting has crashed our economy to its worst position in 50 years of our independent history, Mr. Speaker. In fact, the crash started immediately after the November 18 elections, when indeed of inspiring, when instead of inspiring and generating confidence, Government went up to level nine hiding for 48 hours like rats, preventing the opposition from serving legal documents. So the strategies about low-hanging fruits have plummeted the economy, have planted our economy. Now this is clear as daylight. Mr. Speaker, it is clear to me that the Prime Minister will not sack the Honorable AG and the Economy Minister because both are entwined in the game of political supremacy at the cost of Fiji and its people. For them, rule by freebies and fear mongering is normal, even if it destroys the nation. They don't care. One need not go any further than the AG's 2018 election campaign threat, delivered to voters at the Samambula Primary School on October 21, 2018, when he said, if you don't support a leader like Warenge Mbainamarama, you are putting a dagger to your neck. Mr. Speaker, this government has lost its moral authority to govern. 
they have led us to the edge of a cliff. The choice is clear. If we, the people of Fiji, want to survive, we have to vote them down the cliff in the next elections. Because if we don't, they will push us for their own survival. The 2021 budget and the current severely depressed economy, exacerbated by COVID, is a result of the two men's insatiable appetite to be at, in power at all costs. Now, the last thing Fiji needs right now are leaders who believe in self enrichment instead of genuinely enriching the lives of population in their hour of need. Mr. Speaker, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Thank you. Enough.